Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Uh, before we begin, uh, just would like to remind everyone to please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, share it with your friends. We really do appreciate it. It's a way to help support the channel. Brian, what's going on? How you doing? Doing well. Snooper's going to snoop. Potter's going to pop. <laughs> oh, man. That was a, a, a great episode, man. Yeah, that was a great episode. Let's get into it. WandaVision, episode yeah. seven. Um, every time it ends, I just feel like it's so short, even though it's a little bit longer. Uh, so a lot has happened in that uh, episode. We got confirmation of who Agatha Harkness, I mean, or Agnes was, and... To no surprise to anyone, it was just more like, okay, this is who she is. There's more confirmation. But we, for many of us, we knew uh, who she was. Uh, but to finally get that confirmation or solve that piece of the puzzle was satisfying. Uh, to finally see, uh, uh, what's her name? Oh, Monica, uh, Taylor Paris, Monica Rambo. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, to finally see her you know, kind of changing into who she will be was was fun to watch. Um, what, tell me what you thought about that episode, man. Yeah, I had the same reaction as you, which was I sat down and was braced for the longer episode and then we got to the credits and I was like, wait, that just felt faster than the, the yeah. prior episodes. And then, um, obviously, we're, we're now back into the world of Marvel, Marvel doing credit stingers, and that was yeah. fun, too. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely liked the episode. I enjoyed a lot of it. I think the Agatha Harkness reveal, I thought, was done really well. Like, they mixed the, the nod to sitcoms with, like, kind of take, they trivialized all the yeah. bad stuff she did. Yeah. It was like a gag, you know, but it's like, oh, I, I killed the dog and, like, all this yeah, stuff, yeah. so... Um, so I really like that, and and uh, I like how they built toward it as well with sort of Catherine Hahn kind of escorting um, Wanda away. I like the use of color. I think we finally got clued into like color really matters in this show. Oh, yeah. Like Scarlet Witch, like is red, and like Agatha is purple, purple. and yeah. now we're dealing with what is orange and who's behind orange because that was hinted at, but. No, so I definitely liked the directions we were going at. I also really liked my favorite, one of my favorite, I think maybe my favorite exchange was actually sort of the, the Darcy vision in the truck where she's catching him up on his own history and he's hearing about mm -hmm. Wakanda and dying and dying over again. And I, I, for some reason, I just liked that exchange. It was like, you know, he's getting, he's processing like this whole history that he has that we know he has and now he's finding out. So. I, I, I thought it, I thought it was really well done, and you know, really left a lot. I don't know. Just a, I got to the end of it. And I was like, I really can't wait for episodes eight and nine. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What was your What was your feel about sort of the, the style, the way they presented it? Obviously, a nod to the office. I think with sort of this like, hey, we're gonna break the fourth wall and have Elizabeth Olsen talk to the camera for a lot of the a lot of the episodes. Like what? To me, it sort of uh, reminded me more of Modern Family. Um, a good cat, good point. And I, and I and I and I and I enjoyed it um, because I not every episode is the same. For the for the first three, even though they were different, they still seemed like the same. I guess it's probably because it was black and white or whatever the case may be. But um, this one was sort of they keep introducing new elements that sort of beg to ask the question who is behind all of this. I think the reveal at the end of it, for me, shows just a piece of what is going on. And the overall, because, okay, when they introduced that scene of Ag um, Agatha Harkness um, coming to Westview, she appeared. So I, to me, it almost seems that this place was already established by Wanda or by someone else, who knows? Mm -hmm. So this all goes back to who is all still behind this. And then at yeah. the, the, that mid credit scene of uh, Pietro sneaking up behind Monica, 
saying Snoop was going Snoop. You know, you at first, when they were doing the Agatha, the Agatha Hartness thing, it was Agatha that was sort of uh, made Pietro appear to her at her door. But this one, he's on his own, sort of. So it's still a little bit, um, not co a bit confusing, but certainly begs the question who is still behind all of this. And we'll get a little bit into that um, uh, in a few. But um, recently, um, uh, Tayona Paris has stated that the end of this will be epic and incredibly sad. To me, that signifies <clears throat> The sadness part is that most likely Wanda is going to suffer another loss. Um, perhaps even perhaps vision, losing vision, perhaps losing her kids. We don't know, but there's certainly going to be a loss that she is going to have to experience. And it'll probably be incredibly sad. The epicness of it all points to i believe and i did a little bit of digging Brian. i went back 2014 first before we get into that tell us what you said last week regarding paul bettany stating that he had never done uh uh he's been looking forward to doing uh, a scene with this person or whatever <laughs> So this goes back to the cameo, which has not been revealed yet. And that's been good. That was confirmed. Yeah. And as I was telling everyone, Evan Peter, Evan Peters ceased to be a cameo when he yes. showed up in the next episode. So no point in discussing that. And yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch, if he does show up, has already been reported or yeah. known. So what Bedney had said was there was an actor, a male actor, he said guy several times he had always wanted to work with his entire career never gotten that chance and he said that i think he said that the effect of like when they did share scenes together in this show they crackled like there was real chemistry there and so that's that was the cameo that had not leaked i did a little and bit then of he digging. said i think he also said like people would not have to he almost implied it it might be coming next week because he kind of said like fans wouldn't have to wait that long to to see it so it might be an episode okay. eight Eight or nine. We don't know that. But. Okay. So I did a little bit of digging and I found an article um, from 2014 where Al Pacino had met with Kevin Feige. So he did a, a, a he, he was on a podcast and he answered some questions about his interaction with Kevin Feige and they talked about how he can contribute or be a part of the MCU. In this article, they mentioned a few names of who he may possibly be uh let me run down that list because it all points to this it all points to um this character so one of the characters were was peter quill's dad obviously that was um kurt russell um the next one on the list was baron moto obviously is chitawal i forgot i don't know how to pronounce his last name but you know who i'm talking about yes and the ancient one um, obviously, we know who that character is. Also, um, the Mandarin. And the other one, the last one that I'll leave, that, that I found interesting, was Mephisto. So, I'm calling it Al Pacino will be Mephisto. I'm sorry if I'm spoiling it for everyone, but I believe it just, to me, it, it only makes sense for him to be that character. And based on what Paul Bettany has said, it, it, it just aligns to, 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 to uh, uh, straight for me. So Al Pacino is gonna be Mephisto. And I'm looking forward to seeing that performance because I hope it's not Al Pacino being Al Pacino. Ooh, I yeah, hope I it's you. not, <laughs> I hope it's not Al Pacino in, in The Devil's Advocate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope it's not that. <laughs> I hope it's not that. But it'll be interesting to see, man. It'll be interesting to see. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, let's talk about this and then let's go back to the episode a little more. Cause I yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> well, first off, look, if they, if they did manage to keep this under wraps, congratulations. That would definitely be a, a true, true um, miracle in this day and age. And, and in that sense, it would actually be Elizabeth Olsen kind of winking at us. Because remember, she kind of said it's a Luke Skywalker level cameo. And we immediately went to, okay, Luke, character, A level. But the wink might be... No, they managed to keep Mark Hamill a secret on the set for a year. And so yeah. if you keep Al Pacino a Got secret it. on the set for over a year, that would be the Mark Hamill level cameo. So yes. checkmated by Elizabeth Olsen on that, if that's true. Um, yeah, look, I mean, <laughs> I mean, this is good. If he is Mephisto, the amount of devil's advocate John Milton memes you're going to get before oh, we yeah. see <laughs> Oh yeah, to be off the charts. So oh, yeah. it's on him to be, you know, the right mix of kind of like his various personas. Maybe even almost like his insomnia character or his Irishman character. Like he can do it. I mean, yeah. you know, honestly, it's funny. Like Paterno was not a great um, HBO feature, but he was pretty good as Joe, like as a believable Joe Paterno. So he still has it in him to kind of morph into a character versus just be 90 cent of a woman heat Al Pacino. That's not all he is. Yeah. But the other thing with this character is Al Pacino is not signing up, I don't think, to do one episode of one show. And everything we've been led to believe is this show connects to Spider-Man 3, connects to Doctor Strange 2, which would then lend the lend ours lend itself to is al pacino sort of a multi property villain which is that's kind of cool that's yeah. that's a pretty cool idea you know that sort of i think so great swan song for him as an actor and yeah. something we didn't see coming yeah um but uh yeah it definitely is pointing that direction uh, a lot of signs toward Mephisto in this episode, which I want to get your reaction to, right? Which is the, there is some debate as to where Mephisto is being teased in this episode. So I'd be mm -hmm. curious as to your, wh where do you shake out on this? Is he the fly? Is he the rabbit? Um, you know, what is the book with the, is orange presumably his color? Because that's what sort of the book is suggesting. I'm kind of curious where you shake out in terms of like where Mephisto was actually messaged to us in this episode. I think it was probably early on when Agatha uh, um, mentioned a guy named Ralph. Um, outside of that, uh, you know, when um, Pietro uh, called out and said uh devil's spawns when he was referring to the twins mm -hmm. so obviously that that points to to him and and, and that's and then, from the comics yes yes and speed are basically born from mephisto in, in, yes. in the comics yeah yes yeah. so you sort of have to think about if these two kids move forward outside of this show if they do how did she really give birth to them like who really created them was it wanda you know it's like so you got to ask those questions and i think uh all these signs point to that character i just don't see any it can't be nightmare I don't think it will be introduced now. It'll probably most likely be introduced in Doctor Strange 2, uh, but we'll see. But for this um, show, definitely Mephisto is the one behind all of this. And and, 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 and just thinking about Kevin Feige and how he, you know, loves comic books and knows the history of this, He's going to put that together. He's not going to, I don't think he's going to fail on that. I mean, he's, he has in the past with certain characters, but I think he's learned his lesson and, and he's presented this introduction in a, in a very exciting way. I mean, you texted me and I didn't know what you were talking about, but I didn't know that um, the day that uh, the episode was released. The the Disney servers crashed. The 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 their service went down because so many people were watching. That's how crazy it has gotten for this show. Well, I still I texted you. I said that was the hilarious irony of you have a TV show 
about a fake TV show within a TV show, <laughs> and then the TV show in the real world breaks, so we can't see the TV show. So that was it was something very, very interesting <laughs> and circular about that to me. But yeah, yeah, no, I definitely think the the interest level has gone to another level on this. You know, I have to, a couple of random comments I want to throw in here, if, and then and the Mephisto thing is is a key point. Um, to your point on Kevin Feige, my observation with Marvel is that they they aren't always right, but they don't mess around too, too much with some of the sacred storylines. So when you look at Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity Stones, did they change the path of getting there? Yeah. But did they change the gauntlet itself, the stones or the concept of the snap and what it did? No. They wouldn't touch it. They knew, you know? And so I think of like House of M is up there as a storyline. And so can you take license with, you know, how the X-Men factor in or what have you? Sure. But at its core, there's sort of, you know, Wanda being the puppet of Agatha and then kind of both of them being the puppet of Mephisto. And I just don't think that relationship is something they would cross in this show. And I, I think you're seeing that play out. And I think, again, to people who aren't as well versed, the way they did the Catherine Hahn montage at the end, it's great because if you don't know what's coming, you look at that as the aha moment funny, funny TV classic reveal. For those of us who know kind of what's coming, it's its own trap. Because yeah. right, for those people, they're going to be, wait, there's another layer. Why? Because they literally said, like, I've done everything. Yeah. And we know she hasn't done everything. Yeah, yeah, we know yeah. that she's the pawn and she's not the puppet master. So I think that was great the way they had that balance. I will say one thing, and I, I never thought I would say this, this whole TV sitcom gag I think they missed an era and I'm kind of a little bit annoyed. Like I went from kind of being like, all right, great. 50s, 60s, I'm over it. I kind of wanted them to do like the friends Seinfeld, you know, peak of nineties, you know, sitcom Thursday night. And they kind of just went past it and yeah, they went yeah. right to two thousands with the office of modern family. And, yeah. and I was just like, I'm a little confused as to why, but why, you know, it's, yeah. a, it's a really small complaint, but I was just like, if you're going to do this, that was such a defining era of a TV for me that I yeah. kind of was hoping to see, a, you know, a version of Seinfeld's apartment or something like that. Other people pointed that out too. So uh, it's funny that you, you, you say that. Um, other things in the show, we didn't get the reveal of the, at least I don't think, unless, unless I missed something, um, the aerospace engineer, we didn't get any of that just yet, correct? Yeah, oh, not no. off to a good start, by the way. His giant Lego space rover didn't, didn't really work. <laughs> so, so right now he he he's over one as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, no, definitely not. So, um, I'm I'm really looking forward to now for Captain Marvel too, because although she may not be at the same power level as. Uh, Captain Marvel will certainly see her try to go up against her, possibly, mm -hmm. and we'll see how that will look like. I'm, I'm I, one thing that I was like, I sort of like chuckled at was the superhero landing. Is like, is that ever gonna go away? <laughs> it, it was like, okay, superhero. Landing. The best superhero landing that I ever saw. Not ever saw, but one of the best that wasn't the classic superhero land that we constantly see over and over again, where Superman returned. When he landed on the rock that Kevin oh, Space. And he, yes. And it's like the bolt of they like the yes. thunder clap and the bolt of lightning and they show the S when he's standing there. It's yes. Tall. That was that was tall. dope. Uh but other than that, right before just, he gets his Right before he gets his butt kicked. <laughs> yeah. Because it's all kryptonite. Now. Exactly. Yeah, good call on that. that yeah, because that was not the... He just comes straight down, basically. Yeah. And then kind of he lands. Up. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you have anything else to add to WandaVision, but I enjoyed the, the, the episode very, very much. I enjoyed each episode. And it was one thing. I was watching the John Campion show, and he mentioned something that I, I, I sort of thought about. And he was like, episodes one, two, and three, although we were getting impatient and some of us didn't like it episodes 
these episodes that we have um, seen as of late don't work without those first three. They're they're so important uh, to 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 the whole series, and uh, because without them, it's the same sort of Marvel uh, thing that that we've been seeing. I agree with you. I do stand by my critique. I would have released the first four. It, it, it just to me would have made a cleaner experience to really ca- encapsulate the first three. Yeah, stand by that critique, and I think that's it. So I have a question for you, and then I have a comment. I always love Marvel with the little touches. So I really liked when Monica Rambeau is kind of forcing her way through the hex and we're seeing her effectively transform. They put the audio of Brie Larson talking to the young Monica Rambeau in there. And I was like, Marvel is always good. They're always good at that. They tie those little things back together just to remind you of kind of the personal yes. connections. And so yes. I was like, yes, well done. Um, so stuff like that, great. My question for you is this, what is vision? in this show i am struggling with this right because we know who's real in the sense of wanda is real monica rambo is real the sword personnel darcy are real we now know okay agatha harkness is a different kind of real we now know okay she was behind quicksilver to some degree so there's definitely kind of a you know a creation there and then we kind of know the people of westview are either in or either possessed or not really there Mm-hmm. But Vision clearly is not, he, he can't really leave the hex, so he's not real world in that sense, but he clearly mentally is able to think for himself and process and examine and ask questions about the world he's living in. But we know he's dead. So like my question, is, what is he in this show? I think, because I don't think we ever saw any reference to Agatha messing with, with Vision. Right, but we haven't gotten closure on. They took Vision's body. Vision's body is somewhere, right? That we it is not. We're not seeing Vision's actual body today, post the snap or post the. I don't know. We want to get, but we know his physical body was removed in that clip by Wanda. So I'm still trying to figure out how he's able to kind of think independently while still being dead and, and kind of part of her imagination. I think what hopefully, possibly, in the next episode, we'll see that scene and what led up to that. Because he also has to be able to fight for real. At the end, we know he does. So he's actually got to be able to use his powers, you know, with real effect in some way. My guess is Mephisto's behind it, man. I, that's the only explanation for me. He's behind it. Yeah, I, it just, I just found my, like I said, before I was struggling with who Evan, what Evan Peters was, but I think we kind of got a little bit of resolution on that with this montage where it sort of became clear that he's kind of more of a, I don't know, he's sort of like a, a conjuring of villains. It's like, okay, I, they, and they would know what was going on. Okay, that's explained. Boy, the other thing too, is I was thinking in my head, like if we're heading to a place where, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch, Al Pacino, and the aerospace engineer are all going to pop up in a one to two episode time frame on top of what we got. I mean, you know, we are definitely into like feature film territory. This is yeah. huge. Damn. Yeah, that last episode is going to be. I can't imagine. I would just love to see the numbers in terms of how many people watch these last two episodes, especially the last one. Disney might tell you that on the next, because I feel like on the next earnings call, they'll be able to, you know, they've been focusing on the subscriber numbers, but as this new content rolls out, they might tell you a little something about general viewership or how down, how watched this was. I'd be, I'd be curious on that. The other thing uh, you got, you mentioned the sad ending. My theory on this is actually that we clearly are seeing like, Wanda knows Vision's dead, but she hasn't come to grips with it yet. No. Part of the sadness is the letting go part, by right? letting go of the person you care about most, combined with, I'm assuming the kids are going to play a role in this. Because remember, they disappear. They disappear in yeah. this episode. And yeah. we haven't, but we know they will exist in some real world form as we move toward Young Avengers. So there's something there as well. I think that will be motivating because we also haven't gotten to the part where she adopts the Scarlet Witch name and we know that's coming at some point. So I'm assuming that might be a catalyst for that. So uh, it's yeah, pretty exciting. 
how much more does Wanda Vision, not Wanda Vision, but Wanda, much more messed up that she come out of this uh, show after this is done and into Doctor Strange? Well, I definitely, I definitely think this show has set her up to be both villain and hero, not pure villain, but I think someone who's twisted or going down the wrong path, you know, it's not that this is a bad analogy, but like, you remember how Hawkeye kind of becomes Ronan and you see him doing very villainous things, but sort of because he's grieving, right? He's doing it because he's hurting. I think you could see something similar on a grander, more powerful scale as we potentially work our way towards no more mutants, right? Which yeah. may, maybe that winds up being the seminal moment of, of her pain or what have you. But but um, yeah, they definitely set her up to not necessarily be a hero or on, on the team, uh, the good team, at least in the immediate term. I think mean, that's great. I think yeah. she probably likes that just as well too, so. Yeah. Let us know in the comments section below what you think about Al Pacino being Mephisto. Um, let, you, let us know what you think about the actual episode. Uh, um, yeah, we would like to hear your comments on that. Next up, we got a trailer for the long anticipated uh, Mortal Kombat, which I enjoyed. I enjoyed. The reason being is because Obviously, if you saw the first movie and if you played the games, you see the goofiness to what the actual game was, right? It was violent, um, no real backstory. You just knew what their capabilities were, what their fi finishing moves were, what they were capable of. To translate into a movie, obviously, we're always... Uh, a little bit concerned that the story is going to be garbage, right? Um, as the Mortal Kombat movie that we got, it was, you know, it was goofy. It was, it was, I was watching it the other day and I was watching the scenes and I'm like, this is horrible. We got two, we got two movies in the nineties out of this. I don't know if you remember this. There was a sequel, Annihilation. Yes, yes, yes. I don't even remember that one. Yeah, I, I, does I, else. <laughs> <laughs> I remember some of the characters. They got one of the dudes from American Gladiators, Jax, yep. <laughs> to be in it. And I've never seen him after that. Um, but this movie, and some and some people uh, are saying, uh, th there's this guy who I follow, he's on Instagram. He's saying that this may be the best um, game to movie a uh, 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 film that we'll, we'll we'll see. Your thoughts on that? So let's so if, but let's spend some time on this because I think this is a really fun stuff. First of all, were you a big arcade video game player? I was up? certain. Yeah, for certain games, yeah, I was. Because I think I don't know if you you agree. I think for our generation, this game and Street Fighter Two was right at the peak of the arcade as a place to be with yeah. your friends. Yeah. I was not always an arcade person, but those two games, um, and I give an honorable mention to Operation Wolf, just because mm. you could use the machine gun. Like, but Mortal Kombat was my favorite fighting game. Growing up. That was always a game that I, I don't, and a lot of times I think people liked one or the other. Like you yeah. either were a Street Fighter Street person Fighter, or yeah, you were yeah, Mortal yeah. Kombat person. And I always liked Mortal Kombat better, but I enjoyed both. Yeah. And then we obviously got the train wreck that was the Street Fighter movie. So in a weird way, I remember thinking at the time, Mortal Kombat, the movie was actually not awful because it wasn't Street Fighter. Like the Street Fighter movie had been so bad that like this movie actually was like, oh, well, they actually have some of the elements of, of the game in there. It just doesn't age well. No, if you look back on it now, it's terrible. But I'm saying, I just remember what I thought at yeah, the time yeah, when yeah, I was yeah. in, the, in the theater. Yeah. And they even had like, you know, Christopher Lambert as Raiden. And yeah, I mean, there were a couple of things in there that were pretty, pretty fun. So they set this up in an interesting way. It, the trailer flows more like an adventure than a tournament. That was, I, and I said that to you when I kind of texted you the thing, I was like, 
they're they're probably holding back. You got a glimpse of it here and there, but they really held back the tournament setting, even though there are clearly references to it in the trailer. So you know we are going to get the classic. Here's your scene one on one, but they really kind of held that back. They played it more like a sort of science fiction adventure. Yeah. Um, and and I, so I thought that was interesting. Now, what did you think about going with a new character? as the protagonist versus having Liu Kang or having uh, Kung Lao be sort of the person that we experience the movie through. Because Paul Young is just a guy, right? He's not in the game or anything like that. That's just someone they invented for the movie. Um, I didn't have too many thoughts on it. Um, Because obviously most people are looking forward to just seeing some of the classic characters in live action. Mm -hmm. And the introduction of a new protagonist wasn't, it was just something different. And, and it wasn't like the expectation that we would expect, oh, this guy or this guy. It's they're certainly going a different direction, but um, introducing, not introducing, but sort of still showing the, the, the classic uh, characters that we all know. Uh, so... I was I was I was fine with it. I, my expectations for certain these type of movies aren't never high. So no, I agree. So whatever they do is fine with me. I'm just gonna see it, and if it's dope, it's dope. And if it's, I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be better than what we've seen before. So this actually ties also to if you people were with us for our last show, we were talking about Shang Chi. I went and checked, and I hadn't paid attention to this, but I went and checked after this trailer. So they made a conscious decision to use martial artists in most of these roles. So I'm not sure if people are aware of that. So Louis Tan, who plays Cole Young, is actually, I believe, Mu Tai. He's a very accomplished Mu Tai fighter in addition to being an actor. <clears throat> um, Joe Taslin, who plays Sub-Zero, is actually, I think, believe he was like the national champion of Indonesia in okay. their judo style. Um, and then um, the, the most recognizable one is actually Scorpion. So Hiroyoshi Shinada, who was in the Avengers in, in Endgame, but he's been in a ton of movies. You've seen him, 47 yeah, 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 yeah. Last Samurai. But he actually is an expert swordsman, so by trade. So this goes back to our discussion of like, do you use actors? Do you use martial artists? They clearly have gone martial artists. So I will say my expectations for the capabilities are higher now, oh, now yes, that I yes. know that that's the case. Um, there's a few actors in there. So Jax actually, I didn't recognize him. That was Jimmy Olsen from Supergirl. Really? He's bulked up. Yeah. <laughs> that show. Wow. Yeah. That was the okay. same. Because I, I looked at his face. I was like, I have seen that face before. And then I went and checked. And I was like, oh, it's James Olsen from Supergirl. From the, I hardly the watched uh, Supergirl. I, I, yeah, I hardly watched Supergirl. Had I been watching it, I would have recognized because I'm good with faces. But I didn't, uh, yeah, I didn't know that. So, uh, so there's a couple actors in there, but there, like I said, there's a there's a fair amount. And Ludi Lin, who who's also been an actor, but he's also, I believe, a black belt as well. So there's a there's a he's playing Liu Kang. So yeah. you definitely have a high level of martial arts skill in this cast. So that'll be interesting to see what we get in terms of the 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 fight scenes. Now I, I do have to ask your reaction to a couple of things. What did you think about Sub Zero as the not just the villain, but he's the reason why Jax has no arms? And then it seems like Scorpion's a good guy in this. Is that kind of what we're being led toward? I mean, I don't know if you ever saw the Mortal Kombat cart uh, animation uh, film that they just they recently no, did. Probably, it was pretty dope. And he was the 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 sort of the protagonist. And I think okay. Sub Zero was the guy that he was after. Although, if you watch it, it it was it, everything didn't seem to be as you thought it. Depending on what you saw. It, it everything wasn't as it seemed um it, with regards to sub zero but um i mean sub zero is like is i think it was probably hard to make him a a, a protagonist or anything no. but a villain right no he was yeah he was always like of the two brothers he was always the bad the bad bad one they were both bad i thought but he was always the, the worst of the two yeah but going back to your point in regards to them hiring and, and getting actors that can that can actually fight um it's, it's cheaper than True. getting dudes that don't know and teaching them for months on end or not and the choreo the choreography looking horrible 
So it's cheaper for them to get guys that A, can act, and, and, and B, that can um, be directed and pull off the moves the way they're, 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 they're choreographed is huge. So I wouldn't expect them to, to, to do anything other than that. So that's, uh, it, I think it's gonna be uh, visually in terms of the fight scenes, hopefully they're, hopefully they're dope. And I think they will be. This, by the way, it, is, it was so funny to me. There's so many connections to superhero films in, this, in that movie and people don't. So I mentioned the James Olsen one um, and I mentioned the um, Scorpion one. Other ones, if you were sharp eyed. So Kung Lao is um, the guy who was the Asian Warrior 3 from Thor. Do you remember it was like Lady Sif and the Warriors 3? Uh-huh. Okay. There's the yes. Asian guy in that. So uh -huh. he's Kung Lao in this. Okay. And if you remember in Dark Knight, Lau, the financier for the joke, for the criminal, yes, uh, yes, Michael yes. Jai White and the criminals, yes. he's Shang Tsung in this. Ah, okay. So there's so many people who we've actually <laughs> encountered throughout like sort of Marvel and DC properties who popped up in this and roles. And yeah. I'm like, oh, that's kind of fun. It's just fun yeah. to see like familiar faces. But I agree with you. Like overall, I kind of went from having no expectations for this to at least feeling like, we're gonna see some cool fights, and we'll, you know, I, obviously we got the fatalities montage at the end, so they're definitely not holding back on the on the. Oh yeah, this is time. this yeah. is gonna be bloody as as it should be, as it was already in the yeah. games. So to them to leave that out or make it cheesy in any way would certainly not do it justice. So I, I'm I'm. I'm excited to see this film when it does come out. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. Uh, so tell us what you think in the comment section below. Are you excited? I'm pretty sure you're excited for the Mortal Kombat trailer um, for the movie. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I have to say that Sub-Zero has always been that dude that he he's the most dangerous of them all, pretty much, to me. Well, I hate, well, first of all, I'll just say when I was playing the game and then I, I hated, if I had, a, I had <laughs> friends who are good with using Sub-Zero, I hated fighting. <laughs> hated it. Because it's like, once that's it, you couldn't do nothing. That's it. Once you got frozen, it's over. It's over. Hated it. Yeah, yeah so let us know in the comment section what you, what you think about uh, Mortal Kombat and are you looking forward to it. Next up, there's some DC news. Yeah. Sasha, how do you pronounce her last name again? Kaye. Kaye was confirmed to be a uh, Supergirl. And it was pretty dope the way she um, received the news. Andy Muschietti, I don't know if you saw the video of Andy Muschietti just showing her yeah. the costume and, and yeah. she, she found out that moment that she was Supergirl. Yeah. That's cool. And, and it was cool. And my only concern about this man is Ezra Miller. Because... Andy Muschietti, Andy Muschietti, he's a director. He's done uh, quite a few films, um, mostly horror, correct? It, yeah. I mean, it's kind of what people will know, will know him from as sort of yeah, big he, budget. He, yeah, yeah big he, box he did box. Mama yes. and It Chapter 2. Yeah, so he's done some, some pretty well-received uh, um, horror films. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what this flashpoint is going to look like. Uh, but my my overall concern is uh, with, with Ezra Miller. But when she was introduced as uh, or, or announced to be a Supergirl, I was like, okay, how she'll be introduced, her background. Those are some of the questions I'm going to have and how they do this. And how does it connect back to if it, if it does connect back to Zack Snyder and how does she have a job after this movie? So I'd be, so yeah, this is a good, at some point you and I will probably do a show all about Flashpoint because it is not like anything we've seen attempted in this genre. Like this is a movie that is both meant to be the vehicle for one hero, Flash, but literally meant to reset and repurpose an entire universe at the same time. I mean, Marvel never attempted anything like that. They've done expansions. We're talking about multiverse. Now, they've never put one film to say, like, this is the hub where everything gets redone. And 
Andy Muschietti, I don't, I don't envy him because I feel like this is an incredibly hard thing to pull off in one film. So, you know, and I see this casting and I'm like, great. She actually looks like a fun, you know, addition and, you know, nice that they went and, you know, they're not constrained by how the comics looks. That's fine. I have no problem with that at all. But to your point, what role is she in this film? Is she cameo? Is she intro? Is she really like a sidekick, you know, number two for Flash? Like, I have so many questions there. Yeah. This movie seems to be tackling so many different things. I just, you know, again, I, I'm a little skeptical that it can be pulled off in a way where we're like, okay, like we are now have cleared the runway for all sorts of DC franchises. Yeah, if you guys have seen uh, the Flashpoint animated film came back came out a few years ago, which I loved. I thought it was perhaps one of yeah. the best DC films next to uh, Batman Under the Hood, Under the Red Hood. Um, I enjoyed that movie, and I've seen it multiple times because how great it was. I I certainly doubt that. Andy Muschietti is going to aim for that sort of story. How different will it be will probably be concerning for me because I, I don't know. I, I doubt they'll follow that storyline. I, I, I don't know what, the, huh? They've got baggage from the Snyderverse. That's the issue, right? This ha So it, you were saying, how does it connect back? Well, it's not so much that it has to connect back. It's more that they have to tie off that universe and then kind of move off in new directions. But weirdly, they'll be doing it with three of the characters, at least, because you have Flash, Aquaman, and Wonder Woman, who were those characters in the Snyderverse. So as I said, awkward baggage. There's, yeah. a, lot of, there's a lot to do there. Yeah. And they had, a, and initially, we were excited when we thought that um, Thomas Wayne was going to be uh, not Michael Keaton, but the other guy from Walking Dead. Oh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, the yes. one who was in BBS. Yes, yes. Yeah. I was hyped and excited for that. To have that taken away and now it was Michael Keaton, which I don't have a problem with, but how, you know, is just is this is going to be a different flashpoint, which is what concerns me, and the fact that Ezra Miller is still involved with the with the with the movie. <laughs> he needs to go, but whatever. Um, yeah. So let us know what you think of that casting for a Supergirl. What part you think she'll play in the movie? Um, are you even looking forward to the Flashpoint movie with Ezra Miller? Let us know in the comment section below. I think, you know, honestly, for fans, I think it's way too soon on that. You know, we yeah. just aren't along. You know, the casting was a nice little bit of news, but like we're so far away from that that it yeah. just. And I think you and I have joked about like, is this movie? I mean, you you're always trying to kill off like the Aquaman <laughs> and Wonder Woman sequels, and, I, and to me, this is the one that seems constantly resetting and constantly getting pushed back to where I do have some questions as to whether it ever gets made in the form that it's supposed to. So getting this news this week was like, oh, we're actually, mm -hmm. we actually had the first forward progress um, in this film in, in some time. So, uh, although I will say for DC and it's kind of HBO Max, I think, you know, things are picking up in the sense of like, you've got, you've got Zack's movie coming and then Godzilla versus Kong is a week after that. And then Mortal Kombat is three, two, three weeks after that. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really interested to see, like you get into a stretch where people like us, I think have a lot to reasons to subscribe if you haven't. Of already. course. Hells yeah. Oh, speaking of progress, um, Black doesn't Black Adam start filming in April of this year? Yeah, because we got we did get a casting announcement for another kind of character today who was in the old guard. Um, highly recommend yeah. yes, if you yes. watch that on Netflix. It's a very fun show. If you like Highlander back in the day, you'll you'll recognize Charlie's and friends kicking ass, but he's he's in that movie. He's a very good part of that movie. And now he's now the one of the, the Justice Society, I guess, in, in this movie. But yeah, I guess we're finally getting that behind the camera. Yeah, that's going to be... Uh, I'm looking forward to see whatever is leaked. I'm looking forward to that first trailer because I, I want to see what, uh, you know, that first uh, temporal one trailer that we got was 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 horrendous. Um, yeah. But well, you know, you'll get leaks because um, Wayne Johnson active on social media, he will be giving you set oh, photos yeah. 
every single day. This is the this will be the anti Shang Chi when it comes to <laughs> getting stuff put out. Here. <laughs> this is the opposite of Shang Chi. We got nothing. Now we're getting the whole movie. We could just put it together on a, on a board and stuff, and just piece it together. Um. Yeah, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, Zack Snyder has uh, will have a global release, and you made a comment before we started the show um, that you're not surprised oh. by this. What do you mean by that? Well, I've maintained that it's this is much maybe to the chagrin of Warner Brothers executives. This is the biggest event project they have on the 2021 calendar. It's been my contention from the beginning that this would drive more traffic and more interest and more subscribers than anything else they had. And so it comes as no surprise to me that they announced kind of the globe that we're going global with our service with this because yeah, they yeah. know this yeah. is the thing that gives them yeah. the most chance for interest so that's why i was just like of course and i'm glad he gets a global release but and, and it's and i guarantee when we get or at least i think i guarantee when we get to the next earnings report for at t like you what was what did they have last quarter it was like 12 or like 17 new million yeah. new subscribers 12 million I, I feel pretty confident they're gonna come over the top on that number in large part because of this property so yeah, that's why when I saw it, I was like, yeah, they know deep down what their best chance to get interest is. And it is this. It yeah. is this. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. This is this is huge. Yeah. And we have spoken about this a long time ago, before HBO Max, uh, before there was even talks about um, actually seeing the Snyder Cut, we would say that the Snyder Cut, if they want it to, if they want it to work, they have to release it on on a, on a, on a platform or, or or when I think when they first announced HBO Max, we were like they have to release it on this if they want to see it because they're not going to put it in, in the movie theaters. So this would be the 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 platform that they would do this on, and finally we're going to get it March 18th, Judgment Day. Yeah, we also just um, for for the geeks out there who like um, who like scores, uh, Junkie XL, who is doing the score for this, because his score was rejected for the Joss Whedon version. He posted uh, ah. a track on his uh, YouTube and social media. So if you guys want to check out what it sounds like, it, it gives you a little sense of tone. It's a very classic sort of um, synthesizer, heroic sounding score more in line with what Hans Zimmer did for Man of Steel. Send um, me a link. And, yeah, I'll say it's, it's actually pretty fun. This is about six minutes long, but if you guys are into that sort of thing, it, it just went up um, in the past week. And I, I listened to it. Uh, I listened to it uh, in the last couple of days. So it gives you a sense of how they're changing the music, at least for, for the film. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Let us know um, what you think about this global release. And I'll, I'll put this out there for you guys to comment in the comment section. Do you think, and this is yes or no, I don't need a long explanation, but uh, do you think we get more after this? Do we get more <laughs> Zack Snyder verse after this? I say no. And I say yes. So <laughs> I, say, I say no because Walter Hamada is the one in charge. And from what I've heard, he wants nothing to do with this anymore. Now, I'm not disputing that part of it, but I think I think at the end of the day, money is in charge, and I think true. That... And and Walter Hamada has bosses, and they're gonna say we got ten billion subscribers, so we want another <laughs> movie. This is happening. Make it happen. You know, and I have to say because I know you and I are not in this camp, but I always keep reminding you: you have to leave open the possibility that it's good. And that's part of it too. If it's good and it delivers a lot of numbers, that always is going to provoke people saying it's not finished. There's more to do here. So Zach is saying all the right things, which is that it's done. This is it, which is what he should say. Yeah. Because that is actually the best way you can get another one of these done. Yeah. Um, but I, I I will say yes until it's like, you know, crystal clear that it's not. Um 
but uh, and oh can we tease the people on what we're doing with this oh sure I mean, so we were trying to come up with like, something because i think there'll be a lot of shows out there that are going to break this down scene by scene i don't think we'll be able to do a better job than some of the folks out there who oh, are hell no <laughs> but i think i think in honor of the delayed academy awards this spring we are going to do the snyder cut oscars <laughs> as part of our reaction to this so yes we will be yes. coming up with our version of the awards uh in the context of this film in the context of, of kind of the snyder verse because this is capping obviously the run of films and we will uh try to have some fun with that while breaking down some of our favorite least favorite most surprising um and sort of things that we saw in the film so hope you guys do turn in for that but it should be should be fun if you're a fan of the genre. Hopefully, we'll be able to do something a little creative and different than, yep. than a little what's out there. So. And, we, and before we move on, do you think Zach will have time? Because from what I heard, he has a big deal with Netflix to 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 produce stuff for them. Uh, do you think he'll have time to do something for Warner Brothers? He, he may not be able to con contractually um uh perhaps so do you think there's a chance that he may not be able to do it because of that you mean a sequel yeah my guess is he would always find time to to come back and do it if i mean there's always a way to make that work if this is a big undertaking there was an article this week talking about the 2650 special effects shots they had to put into this in the relatively short time frame they had. I mean, these are two year commitments, two to three year commitments, but I just think it, this has become so personal for him and rightfully so that if he was given a chance to go forward and do another one, he would find a way to get it into the schedule. He has always has lots of ideas. I forget, he was saying something random the other day. I think he was talking about doing a King, another King Arthur adaptation as well, which kind of came out of nowhere that he wanted to do. So I don't I know if that's going to be set up at Netflix or not, but. Uh, yeah. He, he's he, and, and he obviously just worked on you know one of the things that made his name like army of the dead he did yes. another one of those that's coming out so he, he's got his hands in a lot of different things and we've had all these actors teasing that they are working with him on stuff from jared leto joe manganiello so you know i think zach's gonna be very present in the culture i think it's just a question of what he's doing and i think this like i said if he got it if he got a shot i mean he would clearly i think find a way to come back and do it and i think the cast would rally around him and do it again they yeah, you seem think so? very much in his camp for this yeah so. yeah yeah i think they're in this camp for this i don't know about after this yeah no i agree that, yeah. that'd be more interesting to see but yeah you know. moving on and our last topic uh another trailer was released for invincible and man, is this going to be different from anything we've seen in animation? Well, if you if you're into the Japanese animation, we've seen some craziness before. But in terms of superhero stuff, um, like this, and that is not Japanese. This is this is so certainly something different. And it's funny. One of the scenes, I think, I don't know if you you they show somebody flying and, and, and just bodies being the cat, you know, coming apart or whatever. Yes. I, remember, I, I was, I was shocked. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was saying to you before. I, we talked about this. I, so the first two trailers for this, first off, it lo visually looks great. And the, the voice cast is insane. In fact, in this trailer, they Phenomenal. actually kind of wink at it because they put like 40 names at the end. And yeah. if you stop it, it's like every name is an yeah. A-list act. Like, you, you know yeah. all of them. Yeah. But the first two were really focused on the father and the son. And it was really about this sort of like this journey of becoming a hero for the son. And they didn't show you the action so much. You know, they yeah. kind of showed you the flying and all that sort of stuff. And, and the shot you're talking about, when, when the blood started coming out and the fight started coming out, they introduced, I guess, their version of the Justice League, like his team that whatever yeah. he's going to be a part of. To me, that was like very jarring. I was like, I did not see that coming. I was like, oh, we're going this route for yeah. this show. Like, this is yeah. going to be incredibly intense. Yeah. Um, in a way that even, you know, some of the prior DC films, like Under the Red Hood, there's a obviously very bloody sort of traumatic beginning to that. Like, it, it seems like we're going down that path, but but sort of with a story that really seems like it has a lot of, I, I'm deliberately not reading up on the comic. I just want to enjoy this, like yes, from yes. the ground, from the ground up. The guy who created The Walking Dead. I'm like, I just want to see this. But yeah. 
man, I mean, it, the action looks great. The voice cast is great. And like, it feels like it's got sort of real emotional weight to it. Like, I, you know, it's funny, like Amazon has none of the brand name properties. And yet if they've got this and the boys, I'm like, they're carving out a really nice oh, yeah. niche in the genre. You yeah. know? And that's what it's all about, man, is being new and, and different. And, and, you know, to for it to be not DC or MCU and be something totally different where you can start fresh and sort of start understanding um, where some of these characters come from, because th these are obviously comic book characters that many probably who are into that um, know about. Uh, but for, for people like myself, who generally don't read comics, not because I, I think they're boring, because I just don't have the time for it, but it's still enjoy an animated film and movies uh, in, in general, this is this is exciting for me, and I, this has been on my radar since uh, last year when the, when it was first announced. So, I, I gotta say, I'm looking I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this man. I'm looking forward to seeing this film. My oh, only show. complaint with this is they put it. I don't know what we're gonna do because it's March 26th, so it's the same as um, Godzilla versus Kong. A that's that three week stretch is going to be almost impossible to I'll, navigate. With. Yeah, I'll find time for that. Yeah, I know exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Man, I got so some, much coming at the end. Of I March. got some PTO days, and <laughs> you know, I got my basement. I'll lock the door, do whatever I need to do to escape to watch this stuff, man. Because it's going to be, yeah, man, this is going to be crazy. And just to, to add another thing, you know, um, we received a, 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 a set photo shot of. Uh, Peacemaker, they're they're shooting, and that's supposed to be released uh, January. January. So, listen, this this year and next year is gonna be jam packed with content, man. And I am so hyped about it. I'm so hyped. Yeah, so no, it's it's a golden golden time, and like we don't even, you know we probably don't give Falcon and Winter Soldier the the service yet that it deserves, only because I think we treat it as a given. You know, like we oh yeah. We, know what we're getting we're That's so automatic excited. we almost don't talk about it um but you know come march 19th i think we'll we'll certainly have our have our thoughts but hell's yeah here. yeah hell's yeah uh yeah it's crazy march 18th four hours and then we the next day falcon and winter soldier and then the week after that is king kong versus godzilla right and invincible and invincible and falcon and winter soldier will still be running yeah obviously. yeah and then mortal kombat's coming like three i guess uh three weeks later so yeah, man, it's exciting. And then times. theoretically, if the schedule holds, Black Widow is two weeks after that in theaters. That will come up in the conversation in another show again, because as the closer that we get to this date, yep, the more, how would I say, the more pressure I think Disney will feel to depending obviously on what's going on and based on what we're seeing doesn't look like it'll be a smart idea to just put it out in theaters in the u.s I agree. so we'll see we'll see what what happens they're not they haven't budged but but i think they're opening the door i've said that yeah i also think Keep an eye on how Raya does because that's the premier access title that's coming in March. When is that? In, when in March? At the end of March as well. That's not our genre, but they're doing it Mulan with the Mulan pricing structure and a similar release. So all I'm saying is if that if they crush it on that, it's definitely going to argue for not delaying the whole calendar and putting Black Widow out yeah. in May on Disney Plus. No more delays, Marvel. No more delays, especially with movies like this that have been. We, Black Widow was supposed to come out last year. So was Shang Chi, so was Eternals. You can't delay this again. So that's it. We gotta keep. We gotta keep the ball rolling. Um, that was our show for today. Please hit that like and subscribe button hit that notification bell. Also, if you don't have the chance to watch this on YouTube, we do have a, a iTunes uh, uh, option as well so you can listen to the show. 
Uh, so definitely head over to iTunes if you're taking a drive or you're taking the bus or train, whatever it is that you do where you can't watch a, a video, definitely go there and, and listen to the show and support the show there as well. Uh, Brian, any last words? Um, should we watch Devil's Advocate this week or not? <laughs> <laughs> that performance is etched into my memory, so <laughs> okay. I know just exactly she what shows to expect. Up next Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so. I just I hope we don't see none of this because yeah. he did it <laughs> <laughs> right here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> he did that in Godfather too. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, that that. That's the, definitely going to be interesting to see. Hopefully, they say that for, for last, but most likely, hopefully, we get it next yeah. week, too. Who knows? Uh, but thank you once again for joining us, and we'll see you next time on the Journal Report. <laughs>